My name's Trent. I love to play golf. <laughs> I love playing golf, but more than that, I love humans. So I love coaching. I got into sales. So I, I love sales. Um, so I've been at the director of sales furniture for two years, sold for two years. And uh, yeah, I love people, love humans, but I love high adventure stuff too. Like I love pushing the boundaries. I love challenging people. I love, oh, I love gathering people. I love partying. I love just like helping people out. Um, from Burley, Idaho. So it was a small town, dude. Yeah, I just, I'm, like I've always just loved like being around people. I'd say like one of my roles is like, I'm really good at like gathering the large groups of people or just gathering people into certain spaces. Uh, but I'm also really good at one-on-one, -on -one, like really challenging people's mindsets or challenging like how they view the world and really getting people to think. You're a life coach, correct? Yeah. Okay, cool. So why do you feel like a life coach is a good idea for an individual or for a group? Like what do you feel is the value of a life coach? Yeah, I think, I think for me, coaching has just brought on a new like, it's like, it's there as like accountability it's not necessarily like, oh, let's just talk about your past, right? A lot of, um, I'm not trying to say this, but like a, a lot of counseling that I've been to, it's like, well, let's try to fix your past. And coaching is different. I can't fix the past. I can only reframe the past. I can't go back and ever change who I am. But I can start right there, engrave my past experiences upon my heart, and move forward. And so I love coaching because it takes the individual where they're at, and pushes them to where they want to be. What should a good life coach do? Yeah, well, one a good life coach should be well trained. Like anybody, like anybody can say they're a life coach, and anybody can go to like a seminar and listen for two hours, and they get a, a certificate, and that says, "Oh, you're a certified life coach." But it's about like the tools. So it's the tools that you have to actually coach somebody, and I think that's what makes me really unique in the marketplace. Is I I use something called the Habit Finder Assessment. There's only like 100 coaches that are actually certified to use the assessment. And what it does is it goes below your race, religion, your belief system to how you think. So it's not another personality test. I'm actually getting at the core of your issues, the habits of thought that are creating or driving the results that you're getting right now. So let's take those habits of thoughts, those, those thoughts, those results and change them to what you want to do. And I can go deeper. I've had clients tell me, they're like, you've gone deeper in the first session that I meet with them than any counselor has ever been able to get with me coach counseling for a year. I could do it in one session because I already have a snapshot of their habits of thinking. Um, there's an individual out I'm working with and he, he has this habit of thinking that it's called fantastical. It's like a fantastical measurement in the measurement. And it's called fantasy, right? A lot of people go there when they want to live out their dreams. They want to live in ease. They want more money. They want to be independent. The issue is, is that you go into your mind to create a picture, but you never come back to reality. And so people with a lot of anxiety and depression, they have this fantastical measurement. Matter of fact, 96% of people, we've done this assessment over 100,000 people, 96% of people use this measurement destructively, the thought process destructively. He had no idea. He had no idea that he was using his greatest gift destructively. He, can you go into your mind and create image, images simultaneously? And we've been able to work with him. I've been able to work with him for two weeks two weeks and once he found out that's what was causing his anxiety and depression we were able to switch it on a dime i i think that coaching is for people that are frustrated but motivated okay i like that they're frustrated with life they don't they don't really like where their life is right now they're frustrated but they're motivated right like they might they might have had some little drama maybe some drama in the past but it's not weighing them, them down they don't have a victim mentality how much coaching did you do before you decided, hey, I want to do this and help coach other people? Uh, yeah, I was, so I was, I was, so I was frustrated, and motivated, with depression, or that's what got me on the, the path of coaching. Went to a ton of counselors, and then I found a coach. Right, years in counseling. Then I found a coach that told me how I thought. I was like, okay, well, this is totally different. 
And that's when it really hit, it went up, really hit like the peak. And that's when I was able to really es escalate out of my anxiety and depression. So I was actually six weeks into coaching when I decided I, I would want to be a coach. That's awesome. That's really cool. And and how long how long's it been since that six week story you are now? Uh, four years. Four years? Four, yeah, close to five years. So okay. five years I've been coaching. What do you feel is a common misconception about life coaches or, or what is something for the record for everybody like hey this is something that coaches actually do and people think that it's something else yeah um, so I think a big misconception is that coaches will do the work for me I can't do the work for you but I will teach you the principles the practices and the promises to get you there the other misconception that a lot of people have about coaching and counseling in general is if I go to them Oh, I'm a bad person. Like, oh, like there's something wrong with me. But I always, I always tell my, kid, I always tell like anybody, anybody that's successful out there has a coach, has someone that's teaching them and learning them and personal mentoring them. You can get, you can get to where you want to be faster with somebody helping you along the way than if you never had a coach. And so I don't think that it's like when people are like, oh, like there's something wrong with me if I go to a coach. There's nothing wrong with you. It just means you're frustrated, you're motivated. Let's get to where you want to be faster in a short amount of time. And then you would have to do it on your own. Wow. Okay. What do you feel is a great example without giving away your secret sauce, Trent, if you will? Because you talked a little bit about the habit finder. Like, what do you feel like is something, is it is it customizable to every person? Or do you have a little bit of a template that you start off with? We say, okay, we got to start with negative negative thoughts or we gotta we gotta focus on what a morning schedule looks like or what what is something that you like is your bread and butter yeah so a lot of people think that in order for them to like overcome anxiety or whatever you, you like start talking about your self-esteem i start the thing that i coach people on the first is the art of connection how to get out of your own head and connect with somebody else because a lot of your anxiety, a lot of your depression, a lot of the problems in the world come from being selfish and being inside. And so what I do is I get people to get out of their own brain. Like, let's focus on somebody else because once you can focus on somebody else and really, really serve them. And that's what we talk about in the Art of Connection. I really help people lay the foundation of connecting with other people. Because once they can get out of their own head, by the time I get to self-esteem and coach them on that, it's almost healed. My dream is, um, honestly, my dream is to be up on stage, talking to people, obviously have a following, but it, I think for me, it comes down to one-on-one. -on -one. Like, that's when I can make the biggest difference, is working with someone one-on-one. -on -one. That's my dream, is to have my own office and my house. Clients come in, I go to them, I travel to Florida or whatever, and I coach them one-on-one. -on -one. And go play golf. <laughs> Yeah, I would play golf, coach them on the golf course. But it's also to, to speak on stage because, I mean, there's been times where I've like sat in audiences and whatever the speaker was saying, something, you know, it's something to move me. So I for sure would want to speak on stage to people all over the world and talk to them about, you know, the art of connection, dream creation, like physical creation, like you can do what you want to do.